Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So here's the eight hour chart of silver and you can see here the series of trend lines I've drawn in. The one, the most important one of course is this lower trend line and that was the trend line that had been holding up until the election. Now you can see this higher trend line, minor one, was broken decisively by this drop down. And not only was that trend line broken, but this other upper trend line was broken, kind of a more aggressive trend line. Uh, but this lower one held, but as soon as we got into the election, we got a test of uh, that other trend line and then it crashed down below. And you can see we're hanging around uh, 17, 20 or so when we penetrate all the way down to uh, 1666 roughly and you can see that that comes close to about a 1650 support area that's pretty big it's got this back here it's got this area in here it's got this congestion area in here so that's fairly strong but we also have to remember that we're heading into the seasonal uh, time frame uh, seasonal weakness that we see in silver that is often associated with the suspension of the Silver Eagle program temporarily as they retool for the next year. So it's possible that we could get continued weakness into that. That's going to be some really good prices uh, for Christmas time. So I wanted to continue on with this theme about Trump and what's going on with the election and this is a story that I uh, picked up from Lame Cherry now Lame Cherry is kind of a nutcase I don't know if any of you read that blog but this is a person who is apparently in touch with God has divine sources and there's some really strange stuff but there are also some really interesting observations on that blog. I will point out also that on this blog everything's signed by agent somebody. It seems to be different agents. They're always different. So it's kind of a hint there that this might be uh, government agents leaking information. Anyway, this is a very interesting uh, take on this uh, bifurcated market we're starting to see here, especially with the tech stocks and uh, we'll read this and then take a look at the Bloomberg article cited an explanation of technical headlines is another lame cherry exclusive matter anti-matter the purpose of this lame cherry concentrate post is to explain the headline tech stock meltdown meltdown Amazon down 35 billion Facebook more drop why is this because Obama was giving away no interest loans to his Silicon Valley cronies they were taking this money on loan and buying their their stock, which was spiking, buying back their stock, which was spiking their stock prices. And this spike was making dividends to investors to give the illusion that they were profitable. Take away that cheap money, inflict it, inflict into it Fed interest to pay off the super derivative schemers, and you get a $35 billion loser at Jeff Bezos land, while the rest of the stocks are spiking upwards. So you can understand this, Coke makes Coke, Boeing makes Jets. So when you have a company like Facebook, which makes addictive programs to prey on loons who cannot stay off of there, there is not much to sip on or fly there. So all this e-ghost companies have, all these e-ghost companies have nothing which is of physical value. Pull the free NSA funding, free interest money, and introduce Donald Trump's Justice Department investigating the spiked ad numbers which fake Facebook uses, which is criminal in robbing retailers and driving sites like the Washington Post in the red. Stocks tend to drop like rocks in this e-ponzi scheme shell game. Now you have your answer. I'm still hoping to be put in charge of, the, of Division 88. That's the law enforcement division, which features a German 88 to knock on doors to serve warrants. I, of course, would only hire attractive agents like the two Homeland stars who interviewed me. Hmm, kind of a hint there. Those Homeland contracts feeding black op funds to the techies are not now in Obama free flow. This all adds up to a stock drop. So, very interesting take. Uh, let's look at it. Let's see if it's plausible here. So, let's look at the Bloomberg story.
And this is the headline. Trump tech meltdown hits fourth day with Amazon cut by $35 billion. The stock market's post-election bifurcation sharpened Monday as technology shares extended their worst performance since the start of the bull market on speculation Donald Trump's trade and immigration policies will translate into lower earnings. Apple Inc., Facebook Inc., and Alphabet Inc. led the S&P 500 Information Technology Index down 1.7% for the biggest retreat since September. The group stands out as the only industry that normally benefits from a rising economy not to rally on speculation Trump's policies will stoke domestic growth. Tech stocks in the benchmark equity gauge have slumped 3.1% over four days, trailing the S&P 500 index by 4.2 percentage points, the most since May of 2009. Small caps in the Russell 2000 index surged 1.2% to an all-time high. No single fact explains the tech route, though everything from trade and immigration policy policy to industry rotation to flat-out campaign retaliation have been cited. Technology is the biggest group in the S&P 500 by far and one of the only ones to consistently post earnings growth over the last 18 months. Quote, technology provides the productivity gains for the global economy and many of the large cap names like Apple and Amazon were carrying the torch for the market, end quote. That's from Channing Smith, Managing Director of Capital Advisors, Inc. in Tulsa. The firm oversees $1.8 billion. Without their participating, that's definitely going to create a headwind for the market. The S&P 500 slipped less than one point for a second day of losses with tech giants bearing the worst of the route. The FANG block of Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Inc., and Google parent Alphabet each fell more than 2.4%. The group has dropped every day since Trump's victory, sinking 8% for the worst retreat since February amid concern about the impact of Trump's policies on trade overseas where U.S. technology companies thrive. The industry which largely supported Hillary Clinton during her presidential campaign. Now that is an understatement. Uh, We're going to discuss these companies further and their involvement in the election, but that is an understatement of the year. May also face higher hurdles for expanding their footprints after some high-profile business leaders, including Amazon Chief Executive Officer Jeff Bezos, clashed with Trump during the election. Trump, responding to negative coverage in the Washington Post, which is owned by Bezos, maintained Bezos purchased the news organization to gain political influence and avoid antitrust scrutiny. Shares of the online retailer have lost more than $30 billion in value since Tuesday's vote. Quote, it's a big deal with what potentially Trump could do, said Blake Harper, an analyst that covers internet stocks, at Loop Capital Markets LLC in Chicago. If you look at investors in Alphabet, Facebook, and Amazon, they're stacking some type of operationality for them to continue to expand internationally and also expand in other different categories outside their core markets. He said he definitely indicated he would pursue antitrust measures against companies like Amazon. You'd have more restrictive policies to prohibit expansion. Any slowdown in tech earnings may deal a blow to a market that just emerged from a five-quarter profit slump, the longest since the global financial crisis. And it goes on. So very, very interesting. Now, these aren't just tech companies. If you look at the companies that we're talking about here, now Amazon is sort of the exception because Amazon... Uh, is one that just openly opposed Trump, although that's a media company in the sense that they bought control, they control the Washington Post. But uh, we've seen from these companies, and uh, even Apple included, uh, a tremendous bias. We know Facebook uh, was involved in, you know, just spiking stories that had to do with Hillary. And uh, we know that Google has been involved with spiking search uh, terms. And, of course, all of these companies, Facebook, Apple, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, these, I guess we could call them progressive tech companies, uh, they very much opposed uh, 
Donald Trump. And it looks like they backed the wrong horse. Uh, so there can be many reasons that these can be hit. Uh, they can be hit with tariff policy. As they mentioned in this article, they can be hit with uh, antitrust policy. And uh, they can also just flat out be retaliated against for their biased uh, coverage of the election and the run-up to the election. So very, very interesting stuff. I think that there is something behind this lame cherry scoop that uh, now as to whether or not there has been money that has been uh, funneled into those companies, we know that these companies buy, buy back their stocks with borrowed funds and we know that that gives a tremendous boost to their share price and that's one of the ways that the crooked corporate leaders of America reward themselves whether it's the CEO, the COO, CIO, the director, all the top dogs in American corporations uh, they reward themselves with uh, fabulous deals on stock options and so they have an incentive to drive the price of their stock up. Now, an indirect way of driving the price of your stock up would be obviously to increase the value of your company, which would eventually drive the price of the stock up. But it's a lot easier to just borrow billions and billions of dollars at virtually zero interest rates, and then just take that money and buy your own stock uh, jam the price of the stock through the roof, then cash out your options, and then let the whole thing collapse if, if that's what uh, you want to do. Of course, a lot of those guys take golden parachutes, and they're gone by the time uh, all the everything falls out. Uh, all the results happen from what they've done when the debt has to be paid back. So that could be what's going on here. There's no question when we look at the spike in the Dow Industrials, that this is a across-the-board move. Uh, it's uh, technically it's a big breakout. You can see we've got these two. Uh, this is almost like a reverse head and shoulders formation here. Uh, it forms up a big sort of a big pennant. It's clearly a breakout of that pennant, and it's rising uh, very solidly. And uh, that's the first clear breakout of this since uh, about late 2014 the market's been kind of going sideways and testing this area so a definite strong bull breakout but at the same time uh, we see these companies uh, performing very very similar chart patterns you can see here this is the um, Yahoo interactive chart of the Dow 30 uh, compared to Amazon and Google and Facebook and you can see first of all that they seem to those three stocks seem to be trading practically in lockstep here and you can see the percentages were down two and a half percent three percent and four percent respectively on those stocks whereas we have the Dow up three point two five percent so that's really shocking that they would line up that way uh, when we pull it out to the max, you can see that there's a long way to go down. Uh, now, that is looking really toppy. You can see the, the one with the highest return up here at 247% return. This goes back to 2012. We've got 206% return, 153% return, and then we've got the Dow average here at about 50% return. So if this truly is a trend here that's starting, then these have got a long way to fall. Uh, again, these are companies that don't really make anything, although Amazon does uh, have a lot of delivery and warehouses, and they're much more like a real business compared to Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, a lot of these tech companies, Apple, of course, is a real company that delivers real products, but they're all left-leaning companies, and it looks like they may be in for a big surprise here because they may have backed the wrong horse in this race, and we'll talk to you next time.